Hi everyone, welcome to another video. In today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the glycemic index versus the glycemic load. So I've gotten a few questions lately because of my increased fruit consumption. A lot of individuals have asked me um, to discuss this because they're afraid themselves to increase their simple complex complex carbohydrates, their fruit sugars, because of the glycemic index and worrying about certain foods on this list that are considered higher on the list, which is, they, they're, they're saying that it's bad for you, or um, I'll explain a little bit about what the glycemic index means and what the glycemic load means, and also to why it's not uh, really important to so, so much focus on what the number is on that list for that particular food you're eating. So I hope I can address all of the questions that I've been asked lately within this video and I hope I give you a little bit more to an insight on what essentially you should be doing for your body and hopefully give you more of an understanding of what the glycemic index and the glycemic load really are. So the glycemic index is essentially how fast that carbohydrate that you have eaten is um, digested and broken down and absorbed within your bloodstream, and then also how much power and speed it has to actually rise and raise your blood sugar. So the glycemic index is um, a number scale, essentially it's a number scale, ranging from zero to 100. So you'll notice on the glycemic index, there's a list of various fruits and vegetables and other foods as well, like whole grains, legumes, beans, um, and also you can find oils, refined food, processed foods like pasta, breads, things like that to um, see the number that they've indicated on there of essentially how fast that carbohydrate is absorbed into your bloodstream and how much power it has to affect your, your um, blood sugar levels. So um, how fast and effectively it will raise your blood sugar. Now the glycemic load is the concentrated amount of carbohydrate in that food, um, deducting the fiber. To figure out the glycemic load, there's um, a little equation that you can do. So it's the glycemic load equals glycemic index times the carbohydrate divided by 100. So that would give you your answer. A low glycemic load is anywhere from 0 to 10. A medium glycemic load is anywhere from 11 to 19. And a high glycemic load is anything 20 and over. Given all of this information and this knowledge on glycemic index and glycemic load, it only gives you that one particular piece of information, that one particular piece of knowledge. So it does not take into consideration how your body is actually scientifically affected by uh, the sugar that you eat or your fat consumption or your carbohydrate consumption or your protein consumption or any other nutrients that you take in. It's specifically focusing on carbohydrates. So it's not really telling you, it doesn't really give you that explanation of what your body does with that carbohydrate and how it is essentially um, effectively assimilated, broken down, digested, and absorbed and metabolized within your body. It just gives you that number to show you where is it on the scale of glycemic index or glycemic load. It doesn't actually tell you um, what will actually happen within your body when you've eaten that food because it doesn't take into consideration the other foods you're eating or your particular diet overall. Most importantly, it does not take into consideration the amount of fat that you have already within your bloodstream because fat is the actual culprit of why you will have a rise in blood sugar and why you can experience a insulin spike. It's the fat in the bloodstream that clogs the cells so that the fruit sugar, the sugar that you're eating from whatever carbohydrate will not be able to effectively and efficiently be um, absorbed into the cell, it will be too slow, which will cause that insulin spike and it will cause that blood sugar spike. So if you're eating a high fat diet overall, if you're eating 20% or more of your daily calories coming from fats, or if you've just eaten a high fat meal earlier on in the day, again, that is will that's the indicator, that is what will impact your blood sugar levels. Um, when it comes to glycemic index and glycemic load, I really think that it's just, it's such, it, again, it's just a number scale. It's a way for people to um, put numbers on things. And, 
but again, it doesn't look at the whole. You want to look at the very big picture of your body and how your body works. I've said in many other videos that your body, the human body, and other other and other uh, beings on this planet, our bodies are extremely smart biocomputers. They're very very intelligent, and the complexity of which what our bodies do on it on the daily is just extraordinary. We don't even know, like science um, and, and the things that are provided to us, the knowledge that's provided to us, like studies and, and facts and things like that, don't even delve deep into what we, um, what we could potentially know about what our bodies do. It is so very complex. It's that complex that science and research still doesn't even know some of the things, some of what things happen inside of our bodies. To break it down to you, I highly suggest just focusing on a whole foods, plant-based diet. Don't stress about the amount of calories you're eating. Don't stress about the certain amount of nutrients that you're getting. Don't stress about numbers um, and, and things like that. Because again, it's just a way for us to obsess of, of, on certain numbers that, oh, I shouldn't eat this uh, food on this list because it's too high or it's too low or whatnot. Eat whole plant foods lower fat diet will come naturally when you're eating whole plant foods. If you're eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, root vegetables, other tubers like potatoes, um, squashes, whole grains, legumes, beans, nuts and seeds, that is what you truly need to be fueling yourself with. And if you were eating that, you were just naturally eating a lower fat diet, so you will have no issues with blood sugar. You will have no issues your body, your liver, and your pancreas will function optimally because you are getting in the natural, normal diet for your species. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope you found it informative. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button there. And if you're new to my channel, subscribe for more because I help you guys live a healthy vegan lifestyle. I will see you next time. Bye.